Oh, no, I love the way his little, oh, his little his tail is cut off. Oops. All right. Let's get this show on the road here. Yeah. All right. Did you find out that Jonah finds himself in a pretty precarious situation? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A hopeless situation. But you know what? It's in the hopeless places where we see God's power and where we see his unfailing love. Have you not noticed that? Yes. I cannot wait to hear your takes on it because just sitting over here, I know what I have to share about that, but this group came up with something entirely new that I hadn't thought of. And isn't that like the Holy Spirit? Because I've spoken to different groups and, and you know through the years, and they'll come up to me afterwards and they'll say, oh, you know, the Lord really spoke to me in such and such way and I'm thinking did I even say that? I didn't even <laughs> say that. So the Holy Spirit does and that's what is so wonderful about this soap because I know you were working together in groups but can you imagine how much better it would be if you would just just you and the Lord. Wickedness. It's full of wickedness and God says it's come up before me. It is just and it the, the Assyrians were horrible to their enemies. They would bury them in sand up to their neck and take their tongue and uh, put a peg through it and nail, nail their tongue to the ground. This is gross, I know. Most of the people they did this to and then the hot sun would beat down on them and they would go crazy before they would die. It's a terrible way to go. Yeah. Oh. And then I have some other things here. I really, I, I'm trying to get you to understand the reason why Jonah feels the way he does. Yes. They had once come down against Jonah's hometown. Um, he had had personal experience with them, potentially. They may have come into his home. We don't know. And he may have seen his own father and mother tortured and killed by these people. He could have seen his sisters raped by these people, you know. He had a seething hatred for the Assyrians, for the Ninevites. Um, piles of body, they would just, they, it was like um, the Nazis did with the Jews. Just picture piles and piles of bodies. And they'd skin them alive and leave them to die in the scorching sun. Um, they would cut off their limbs. If anyone rebelled, noses and ears, and they would put out their eyes. These are vicious, vicious people. Um, and he's saying, go preach to these people. <laughs> Devout enemies of Israel. It's like if you're a Jew being told, go preach to the Nazis. And at that time, that was the, they thought that was the end of the earth. So it tells you Jonah was going, in his mind, to the end of the earth. Do you have someone, maybe, that when you hear their name, because this is how it was with Jonah, he'd hear the name Ninevite, and he would just, boo, you know, just cringe. And you just feel that sweeping, Ugh, you know. Imagine yourself. Imagine God telling you, you need to go talk to that person. Or a you people need to group. Tell that person about me. Yeah. What? Or a people group. A people like group. Yeah. It could be a people group too. It could be ISIS mm -hmm. for us right now. We know that how horrible they are. How would you like it to have to go stand before ISIS and proclaim the Lord your God to these people? This is the kind of obedience God is calling us to. You know, here am I, Lord. Send her. <laughs> I am here, but I don't want to do this one. Send her. Send Hope. Send Sylvia. Send Christy. I don't want to do that one. He didn't call. He didn't call Christy. He called you to do this, you know, or you, or you. He found a ship that was going to Tarshish. He paid the fare. And he went where? Down. down. How many times have you seen the word down so far in that verse? Mm -hmm. 
so far. Twice. He went down to Joppa and he went down into it. It is the ship to go with them. Who is them? Okay, it's it's the pagan sailors. So he's he's hobnobbing with these pagans, you know. He's the only believer and the one true God on that ship. From the presence of the Lord. That is said twice. Did you guys He was escaping, he thought, the presence of the Lord. He went down, down, and down. And when we choose to walk in rebellion, and it does happen to us, we have to be mindful of that and constantly uh, monitoring our behavior and our our alignment uh, in terms of are we imitating Christ or not. It says here that um, he paid the fare also. He paid the fare. You know, when we turn around and walk away from God, we pay the price, don't we? We pay, we have their consequences to disobedience. And they're usually not very fun, are they? We might not find ourselves in the belly of a great fish, but we'll find we'll it'll feel like it, won't it? I want us to turn and read Psalms 139, 7 through 10. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no getting away from him. Uh, eliminate selfishness in our choices and in our actions and choosing to um, surrender more fully um, by being, trying to be more aware of our, our actions and motivations. Yeah. Can we go out and do that this week? Yeah. So easy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's easy to, <laughs> to say sitting here, isn't it? But when life hits us, it's, oh. So, Lord, we ask you right now, help us to remember this. <laughs> oh, bring it to remembrance, huh? Yeah. All right, any other thoughts from anyone else in that group or anyone else here in the room on that passage? Um, one of the other thoughts that we had in our group was also with um, the everybody throwing cargo off the side of the ship and, you know, one of the things that we talked about was how quickly we try to solve things ourselves mm -hmm. before we go to God and realizing that thinking that we can fix the problem. Like they thought they could save themselves by lightening the load. Mm -hmm. it, it, and yeah. It's and human and, nature, and, isn't it? It mm -hmm. is. And also the fact that they all, like you said, they cried out to their gods. And that they were so desperate to save themselves that they turned to Jonah thinking like he must have like, his God must be greater than ours, you know, because otherwise they would have still been leaning on their God. Right. Like, you know, if there's something else that goes wrong, call a friend. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But he should be the first one we turn to. And it says, many Christians are asleep, just as Jonah was. Okay, this boat is in this storm. And I feel like we in our nation today are in a storm that God has sent. Isn't that interesting? We don't think of God as being the one who brings the storm. We think of him as being the one who what? Calms, Calms. Calms the storm. As Jesus did. The Lord hurled the great wind. Think about that word hurled. Now I have New American Standard. I don't know what your verbs are that were used in verse 4. But when I think of hurled, I think of whoosh, you know, I mean, almost with fury. What, what are some of the other words that are used there in your translations? NIV says sent. Sent? That's not nearly as strong as it. No. Mine says flung. Flung. Which translation is that? The new Wow, that's a good word, too. Jonah slept in a place where he could not help with the work that needed to be done. 
he was sleeping. And the, the sailors, what are they doing? They're out, they're bailing water, they're fighting the, the storm. What's he doing, this man of God? Oh, he's downstairs sleeping. Or, you know, just complain about whatever's going on in our nation. We don't want to do anything. We don't want to pray. It's easier just to complain, isn't it? It's convicting. Jonah slept when he was in great danger. Sleeping Christians are in danger, but don't know it. Jonah slept while the heathen needed him. Sleeping Christians snooze on while the world needs their message and their testimony. Just to be constantly aware, checking ourselves, if uh, how, are we, how are we conducting ourselves? Are, am I acting like a Christian here in the workplace? You know, and everyone else is gathering in the, I say teacher's lounge, but wherever you guys gather, you know, and uh, are we different? Are we, or are we just like everyone else? Yeah. And you know, we're, we are a peculiar people, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's be peculiar. <laughs> um, I was just thinking that the sailors identified there was a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. And once the problem was taken care of, John was thrown overboard, things calmed down again. And perhaps even in our own life when we have a problem mm -hmm. and we do the correct procedure to take care of it, once we identify it, by God's grace, things calm yeah. down again. Right. And, and if things don't calm down, at least we calm down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we've repented. Mm -hmm. We've confessed. And we're right with God again. And then He can extend his peace to us. Grace and peace, they're often together, aren't they? So we receive his grace and we have peace, even in the midst of the storm, whatever storm we may have created for ourselves. And in order to hear his voice, we have to be still. We have to stop. We have to listen. We have to be a way. I, I'm a proponent of a special place, mm -hmm. a special place, that even if you live in a house all by yourself, that you have a special little corner mm -hmm. where you go. I love the war room. Mm -hmm. Boy, I could not wait after I watched that movie to get home and make up my own little war room. How many of you felt that way? I mean, didn't it just kind of stir that up in you? And I did it. And there's something really special about that. He desires to spend time with us. He desires to speak to our hearts. And we cannot hear him if we don't be still. Just stop for a minute. Just stop and be quiet and let me speak to you. And he's not going to tell us anything that goes against what is already in Scripture. So whatever it is, if, he, if you feel this deep inner voice calling you to go to a friend and speak to that person, or to talk to the person behind you in line at Walmart, do it. Because you know what? He's already said it right here. So always align whatever it is that you sense His Spirit telling you with what He's already said. And do not, do not listen to that voice that, is any, that says anything contrary to what's in here. So, yeah. We need to be people of compassion. It doesn't mean we close our eyes to sin, but we address it and then restore. It says in Galatians 6, 1, you see a brother in, in a sin, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, lest you too be tempted. They don't want to be guilty of casting this prophet. He's already said, I'm a prophet. We don't want to get in trouble with his God. What's, what, how much worse can it get? And um, so they're desperately trying to return the land, but they could not for the sea, even with all their work and all their efforts 
was becoming, again, it says, even stormier against them, no matter what they were doing. And boy, they did not want to throw Jonah overboard. They tried everything else. Next week, we're going to talk about, oh, Jonah, he's in the midst of the, the belly of this great fish. The weeds are wrapping around his head, and he's, he just feels like he's being dragged down. And boy, that is so descriptive. I can't wait to get into chapter two. It's going to be really good. So don't miss next week. And those of you watching online, it was good to have you join us, and we'll see you next week. Bye. You guys want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Oh, Virginia wanted to be in the picture. Yeah. That was for you. Yeah.